Now you wanna start investing in the stock market, but you just don't know what companies to invest in. Well, that's why I'm gonna share with you now is five methods I've used and I still use today to help myself find companies to invest in that are just right for me. And these methods will work for you and I hope you find value in this video. In fact, if you do, go ahead and smash that like button and leave a comment down below. And if you're interested in wealth building strategies such as stock market investing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So the first thing that I recommend everybody to do is go window shopping. Now, I don't mean go window shopping as in, oh, I want that one day, I want that one day. Oh, when I'm rich, I'm gonna get that too. I mean, go out and as you're looking at products as you're shopping and as you're just wandering around browsing, look at the products, look at them and say, why do people want this? Why would I want them? And who made them? Because when you go to a store, the store doesn't make all those products. The store buys those products from other companies and then they sell them out to people. Every single time you go into Walmart, sure, they have great value products. You know, that's their brand, but they have other products as well. I mean, Nintendo's not owned by them. Neither is PlayStation. Neither is, you know, all those other companies in that store. You know, Target, the same thing. They have their brand and then they have everyone else's brand. Ask yourself, why are people buying them? What are they? Why would I buy them? Also say, what's being displayed right now? All right, why is it being displayed? What's in people's carts? Why are people buying them? You know, when you go over to your neighbor's house and you look around and look at their house and say, ooh, that's interesting. What is that? Ask yourself, who made it? You know, because there is a chance that those are publicly owned companies that are doing well or gonna do well in the future. And those are the companies you wanna buy into, especially if you are the one consuming their products. Let me give you an example of a company that I did find that you probably have heard of, which is Bing, all right? That's a product, it's not the actual company. Uh, the company is a privately owned company. However, if it goes public, it would be one that I'm interested in pursuing. But the point is, is that everybody knows it now, but when it first came out, it, it was just, here and there, people would be like, oh, have you tried a bank? Oh, have you tried a bank? And these are the kind of companies that you should be interested in, is those ones that just appear out of nowhere and then take the world by surprise. Because if they are a publicly owned company and they're just barely coming out of the woodwork, you can still get in while the company is still low. And when it really blows up, you're already in and it's going up with you or you're going up with it. Now, another method is peer-to-peer -peer conversations. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to your neighbors, talk to your coworkers, talk to everyone. Let them know you're an investor. Say, hey, I'm an investor, you know, do you, do you guys do stocks? And if they say no, then you know, that's okay. Ask them if they did, what companies would they be into? What companies would they invest in and why, All right? And if they do invest, that's even better because they already know the companies that they're in and they can probably share with you more details about them. And so an example of this is one of my colleagues, I was like, hey, you invest, right? And he's like, yeah, I do. And I was like, cool, what companies are you interested in? And now he was just barely starting out, but he was like, well, I'm interested in Snapchat and I'm interested in a company called Roku. Have you heard of them? And I was like, well, obviously Snapchat. Roku, however, that was kind of a newer thing for me. I've never heard of them. Now it's not as big as it is now. I mean, it was, you know, a while ago. When he explained it to me, I was just like, well, it doesn't sound like something I'm interested in. Uh, mostly because it sounds, Roku to me sounds like it's just, you know, Amazon Fire Stick and Netflix had a baby, all right? That's what it is to me. But at the same time, it was around $30, $40 a share when I was looking at it. And then it went up to like 170 and now it's down around 100 or so, you know, close to breaking into that two figure, you know, so it's not been doing so great. But the point is, is that if I was interested and it shot up when I, got, when I would have gotten in, I would have made bank, but I didn't because it's not the, it's not my cup of tea. Same thing with uh, Snapchat. I just don't find it appealing. Therefore, I won't invest it. If I'm not willing to dig into it and be part of it, it's not probably something I should be investing in because I just don't understand the business model or the mentality behind it. Um, but when they were, he was talking about it, it was only like six, $7 a share. And then it shot up to like, you know, it shot up like a, 20% after the earnings came out. And I was like, wow, imagine if I actually did invest in this company, I would actually be doing pretty good with this company right now. Obviously I didn't participate in those particular companies, but the point is, is that he gave me two companies that did do well, that if I 
wouldn't have been interested or just hadn't thought about in that way and did jump into them, I could have made some money off of that. All right. My wealth could have increased. The next thing is search engines. All right. Search engines are big help, especially if you are out of options. I go through my brokerage accounts through TD Ameritrade. I don't, I'm not sure about other platforms. I'll look into them on a later date. Maybe I'll find one that's better for me. But I like TD Ameritrade because they provide search engines for filtering out companies so that you can just narrow it down to a, a firm list that you could just go through one company at a time. I'm sure that there, there are other companies out there that do the same thing. But I like it because this morning, for example, or last night, one of the two, uh, all the days mixed together for me. Anyways, I was searching and I created a list and I came out from starting out with like 10,000 companies, dropped it down to 90 companies. Now, obviously that's still a big list, but it's smaller than what I would have had to do if I had to go through each couple of thousands at a time. And the same thing goes for you. It would, it will definitely narrow down, especially if you know what companies you want, you can easily just throw some of those companies out. That's number three. Number four is social media. All right. Now this is kind of a shocker, but this is a good way to find trendy companies. All right. Um, so find YouTube channels or Facebook groups or Instagram company, uh, people or Twitter feeds or something like that and find them the people who talk about companies all the time, you know, find those investment groups and listen to what companies they throw out and join in on the conversation and ask them questions. This is kind of like the peer to peer, except for on a broader scale. This can help you find companies that you never heard of. And if other people are talking about it, that means that other people are buying them. And if other people are buying, maybe you should too. The last thing is, is news. All right. CNBC, it's the stock market channel. Other things such as Yahoo Finance, whenever there's a new article that comes out about a company, they usually tag other smaller companies in those articles. And if they tag other companies, they're probably related to the company that you are already interested. Therefore, you already know a little bit about that company. So they might be potential buys. So use those articles to find other companies that you might actually be interested in. So those are the five methods I got for you. The first one was window shop. The second one was peer to peer conversations. The next one was search engines from brokerage companies or other companies that provide filters to help narrow down the list of companies that you're looking into. The fourth one was social media. And the fifth one was news as well as news articles about specific companies that will have other ticker symbols inside of them. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. And I will see you in the next video.